Yo, what's going on, shroomies and shroomettes? It's your guy with the fun jive, Easy Blue Thumb, and we are back with another one. And in today's video, we finally get to test our liquid culture on our agar plates and inoculate a few grain jars while we're at it just because we're impatient. So let's get it. Let's go. Yo, what's good, shroomies? So it's about that time. I had these three liquid culture jars sitting for, I want to say about two months now. I really haven't had the time to do any recording or any type of mushroom work. So these have been sitting for a while and I just wanted to test them before I actually go ahead and inoculating a bunch of grains and have some contaminants inside the jars. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And I wanna show you guys the method that I use to get precision drops on my agar each and every time. So the method that I like to use when I am testing liquid culture or multi-spore syringe, pretty straightforward. You want to make sure the plunger is a little bit of a distance above your thumb. So that way, when you're squeezing, it's not so difficult. All you need to do is a very light squeeze to the side of the syringe and you get one single drop of liquid culture in each agar dish very simple very easy and it avoids any type of mycelium getting stuck you squeeze in the plunger and now you have a whole plate filled with your liquid culture now here is something for you myco nerds to geek out about because when i first saw this lid style i was hyped i didn't even know what i could use it for or how to use it but i knew i had to have one and i didn't want to pay for it so I made one myself. Now, putting the parts together for this build was no easy task. I could not find a whole bunch of clear information on how to do it. But if you guys wanna see a tutorial on how to build these jar lids yourself, drop a comment below. Tell me how you really feel. If you are interested, I do have a complete part list on my Amazon storefront or you can hit up Mr. Blue Thumb himself and I could build you a few. So I do recommend this type of jar lid if you're into producing more than one syringe of that same liquid culture, then this style jar lid is intended to expedite that process and more intended to leave you with a known sterile product because you're not constantly jabbing at it with a needle, withdrawing the liquid out of it. All right, finally get to put this dusty old jar of corn to use. It's been sitting for about just as long as that liquid culture solution. So we're gonna go ahead, use the rest of the syringe for this popcorn. Why not? Why not? Let's do it. These jars is extra tight so go ahead crack that open i'm not using the injection port for this because there's no need to waste a needle right now at this point and i'm gonna try and splash some on the glass a bit so if it does take off we get a nice little mycelium trail and just a reminder when using your liquid culture syringe or a multi-spore syringe Less is more with this. You don't have to go crazy and saturate your grains, especially with the liquid culture. It already has mycelium. It's ready to go. It's just looking for its next nutrient source. And I mentioned that because I did have a clog and I injected a bit too much and we have some pooled at the bottom, but I did go ahead and shake it up just to get all of the grains covered. All right, so now that we're about to wrap up our agar testing process, we need to wrap up our agar plates. Now, I've been getting a few questions in the comment section about what material 
I use to wrap up my plates. And this is basically a grafting tape. It's for plants, plant repair, plant grafting. It's a stretchy, plasticky, self-adhering type of tape. Uh, pretty inexpensive on Amazon. Of course, it's in my Amazon storefront. Everything that I use is in my Amazon storefront. You can get these plates that I'm using, the jars, the lids, the materials, the grafting tape, everything that I'm using, the stands, whatever you need that I'm using is in my Amazon store. Go check it out. Now, labeling may seem like a simple thing. Write the name on it. You're good to go. Well, if you have a bunch of genetics and you're working a lot of things and you're trying new things and you have a bunch of transfers and fruits, you kind of want to keep track of those things. So what I do when labeling is I use T's and F's, transfers and fruits. Now, since this is coming directly from a liquid culture jar, these will be T zeros, transfer zeros. And I usually will put like a LC or MSS next to it in small, just so I know what that transfer is coming from. If it's a swab, whatever the case may be, but that's just what I do. And then once I grow it out, that clone would be clone fruit one F one of that line of genetics. So maybe that'll help you guys out. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not the least bit worried about this agar passing our bacterial inspection. Now, my pressure cooking skills have definitely gotten better. We're taking our time and we're actually learning these things and applying the knowledge we have learned. So I'm not worried at all about the agar. Now, the popcorn has been sitting for at least a month and a half, I want to say. So it may be on the drier end, but hey, let's let's see what we get. No worries at all. Make sure you're testing your liquid culture. Just because it looks clean doesn't mean it is. As well as your multi-spore syringes. Test it all. Your boy dropped the ball and I forgot to record the progress that I have right here on these four popcorn bags now the one to the far left wasn't really doing too well from the jump but the other three had beautiful rhizomorphic growth about 70 to about 85 percent colonized so we did the break and shake just before we started testing our liquid coach now we have everything on display for your eyes pleasure in our spider farmer four tier plant stand with the 54 watt grow lights now the cool thing about this tent that i really like is the clear plastic front i use this tent as my incubation chamber so i don't always want to have to keep opening and closing just to check on my grains so with this tent i'm able to just slide down the zippers in the front and flick the switch we have light on each shelf and I don't ever have to open it. And in just four days, the bounce back is crazy. Three bags already almost fully colonized. And this bag right here has been a dud from the beginning. Wasn't expecting too much out of that. But these three genetics have definitely been going crazy, especially this middle bag, which is my very first cross which i am proud of because that bag has been going crazy with the rhizomorphic growth super aggressive super fast colonizer now to our agar plates if you're wondering why they're upside down as you can see we have some condensation now even though i have this particular grow tent ran off of the genius grow controller i completely forgot to turn off the light so it did a full 24 hours or so with the lights on and that's why we have our condensation but no big deal we flip our plates upside down now there's ways of getting this condensation out of there but it's really not that big of a deal to me and we have no growth on our popcorn just yet but i still have some faith everything is looking good in the tent so it's time to close it up and 
This time I remember to turn off the lights. Yes, sir. You already know I'm hype right now. All three bags fully colonized, ready to go. So we're definitely doing some mono tubs. And I really wasn't going to make these bags a main focus of this video. But since I already showed you guys, I might as well go ahead and put these things to bulk. We're going to go ahead and just trash this bag. I mean, it really ain't doing too well. So that's going to go. And these three are going to bulk. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Now we do have mycelium growth on this one popcorn jar. And if you guys know, I'm pretty much set and forget. So it's been about another four days and our plates are looking gorgeous. Oh man, we're one for one right now. Well, we already know they cleared obviously, but we're two for two right now, still in the green. Let's go one more. We're three for three right now. And this jar uh, doesn't seem to have any mycelial growth, which is okay. It's no big deal. Oh my God, look at that plate. We're four for four. We're five for five people. And another gorgeous plate. Six for six. Also, this one didn't do anything either. No mycelium growth in that jar. Seven plates looking beautiful. All nine have passed. They all look pretty good. So we will be taking some transfers out of those and putting that into some fresh grains. So I think it's about time for us to take those three grain bags and spawn to bulk. Let's get our substrate prepared. What I didn't mention in the middle of the video when I introduced the popcorn bags was that these genetics from the popcorn bags right now are the genetics that we use to make our liquid culture. So we did grow them out and we grabbed some clones and put them on agar dishes. Once the agar dish was fully colonized, I picked out the best parts of the mycelium and we made our transfer into our liquid culture solution. If you're interested in a video showing how to make your own liquid culture solution, drop a comment below. And if I have enough comments, I'll make a video. I wanna go over a few tips and tricks that I use while I spawn to bulk. Now, if you see in the beginning, I use my Flarisol bottle to spray some water in the inside of the tub so that way when we use our liner it doesn't have air pockets the water helps it stick to the tub also i like to go in when we're mixing our grains and our substrate and i like to remove any pieces of agar that we have in there they may not mean any harm but i just don't like it so i get rid of them for our substrate we are going with the bucket tech 650 gram brick of cocoa core with 14 cups of water to a boil we let it sit inside the bucket until it gets cool to the touch i usually let it sit overnight just so we know for a fact that it's cooled off make sure to cover up any exposed grain a nice spritz on the top and on the lid and we're good to go so this is a little bonus for you guys. Um, I had this extra jar and I've been wanting to see if I can grow mushrooms straight from the jar. I seen a bunch of cool pictures of, you know, one or two fruits coming out of here. So I thought it would be cool to use up our extra cocoa just to see if we can actually do it. Now, same rules apply here. We're just adding cocoa, making sure it's even, no exposed grains. And I will use the Ziploc bag as a humidity dome slash lid. And once the top layer is fully colonized, I'll go ahead and we'll introduce some fresh air. Shroomies, shroomettes, I appreciate y'all for joining me on today's journey. Now, before we get out of here, I do want to show you guys how I store my Micropose monotubs until harvest day. So here they will sit comfortably in our Spider Farmer four tier grow tent with the translucent front cover. 
we even have our project court jar going hopefully we can get some fruit out of that clone them and start the process over that'll be pretty dope now with this grow tent we have full spectrum led lights on each shelf and at this stage of the grow we are not going to be using any light source we want to wait for that top layer to colonize introduce fruiting conditions start to see our first pins then we can introduce our lights until then darkness it shall be i appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy drop some comments and let me know what you think about today's video y'all be easy peace